Hello everyone! Welcome to Makeup Monday. Today I actually have two Makeup Mondays. I recorded the tutorial for this look, which is, I'm calling it, a shimmering spring. Very pastel, simple, but still really pretty and just very springy. And for this video, because I'm trying to make up for missing a week, uh, two weeks ago, I'm going to be doing the regular end of the month Makeup Monday if you have been here before. On most Makeup Mondays and the last Monday of the month, I go through my month-long empties video. So from video to video, from empties video to empties video, everything that I've used up for the month. And we're going to go through new reviews of them. I have a bag. So there is going to be crinkling. If that drives you crazy, then whoops, you nerder. All right. So I have a lot of these, probably too many. I have one, two, three, four, five. Five of these Tea Tree Premium Mask Anti-Aging Acne from Beauty Secret Labs. It has tea tree oil. I really, really like this. It has a cloth rather than actual paper sheet for the mask. The serum is very thick and it gives you so much moisture into your skin. I can't say anything about the anti-acne very much. Tea tree oil is good for it, but I don't notice a significant difference with this. But for giving your skin an instant hydration moisture feel, absolutely amazing. I got a pack of them from a friend for Christmas, and that is why I have so many this month. I also used another mask. This is the Alba Botanica Fast Fix Sheet Mask. This is the anti-acne one. This helped uh, with my acne a little bit. It helped calm down some really cystic things that I had going on this month, but I really do prefer the Say Yes to Tomatoes mask for such things or the Origins clay mask, much, much better. Another mask here, I use a lot of masks, I know, just sit, sit yourself. This is the Pure Detox Mud Sheet Mask. I have a full review of this that I will link to below. I absolutely love this. This is a sheet mask and a clay mask in one. It gives you the convenience for the most part of a sheet mask, but it is a 30, 40 minute mask. So if you want to sit there and watch an episode of something and chill with this on your face, it's, you can do that. You can do a little binge watching of YouTube videos with this. It's really good for if you need your face removed, essentially, this is the mask to do that. We all have those heavy makeup days where you're just like, I want my skin sucked out because of how much stuff I've had on my face today. Another mask that I have a full review of that I'll link to, I actually did this one a couple of days ago. This is the Dr. Dart Shake and Shot mask. It has this weird little baby face thing on it. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, not a fan. Um, it's a little gimmicky. It's something that I think I mentioned in the video where if you were having a sleepover with a bunch of people, this is something that you buy to to do for one of those kinds of things. But it's really not otherwise worth it. Sorry about my phone alarm. And it looks interesting. It's a rubber mask, but for $12 for a one-time mask and the faff that it is, no thank you, George. I have my Opti Free Replenish um, Enhanced Comfort, you know, disinfecting solution for contacts. It's the big one. My brother and I both share them, so I didn't use this up by myself. But that's the one that we've been dedicated and loyal to for several years. This is the Yves Saint, Yves Saint Laurent um, to Chiclat. I don't understand the point of this because it's so, it's so thick and intense that I really don't like it as a highlighter, but because it's so shimmering, it really doesn't do, and like concealing isn't its thing because it highlights where you put stuff. So I don't understand this. I know that some people love this for their under eye, like Fleur de Force talks endlessly about it. I don't like it. I get the sample of it every once in a while 
to see, oh, maybe I changed my mind and I didn't change my mind. That's not a thing that happened. I have two brushes that are, that are just, I call them empties, but be, I'm just getting rid of them. One of them is this one. This is a very old brush that I've had forever. It came in a set, one of the first brush sets I had, and it's this little angled brush, but I keep losing all of the bristles all the time, constantly. Every, I'm, I just feel like the whole thing is going to come out in a short time, so like I'm moving on from that and the next one is a brush that I was torn about getting rid of because I actually like it but it's too much it, it's too much upkeep for a brush this is the bare minerals perfecting face brush and it has this little dip and I actually used it on my face today and it was I decided it was gonna be the last time because I immediately after I put my face on I washed it but look do you see it holds product a little too well because I wash this thing so much. I've had it soaking in solution. It's just too hard to keep clean. And, but look at all of that. I can't, no matter what I do, I cannot get it out. It's stained. I can't get it clean enough. And it's gotten a little worse over time to the point where it's so streaky when I put my foundation on just, a couple hair products. I got a few hair products actually. Uh, let me go get the other one. It's over there. One moment. my hair products I had two of these hair masks from whole bent whole blends Garnier whole blends I got two of the sample packs wasn't too impressed it would it worked good as a regular conditioner before a mask leaving it in I really didn't feel the way I just like using their regular whole blends conditioner better for my dry end hair and just I think that the little samples are fine once in a while, but they weren't anything special. They're nothing like the Amica hair mask or something like that. Then I have two mane and tail products. One that I love and have bought before, the Detangler. This is amazing. It smells great. Great for detangling my real hair and the wigs that I wear. Absolutely love this definite repurchase. The Mane and Tail Conditioner, I had, this is the first time I bought it when I had bought it. I used it today, the last time today, because it takes so much in my long hair. But it says a conditioner for dry, damaged hair. If you have oily hair, you might actually like this. Because for me, this is more like, this is going to sound weird, but it's sort of a clarifying conditioner. You know how there's clarifying shampoos? This is a blue clarifying conditioner because it really doesn't add a lot of moisture to my hair, um, but it didn't leave it completely unconditioned either. And having dry hair, normally I, my hair soaks up moisture and really digs that kind of stuff. It feels a little, I couldn't use it back to back. It felt a little too um, just straining to my hair really. It felt like it was taking too much away. Unlike my clear conditioner, which I also used up, love this stuff, repurchased it. It's great. Um, it's not a, it's not the most, you can't use it as a mask. I wouldn't double it as a mask before. As your regular conditioner, absolutely amazing. Very, very loyal to it. Then I have two toothpaste. I have my Crest 3D White and my Colgate Optic White. I tend to go for whitening toothpaste. And honestly, I've been using the Crest 3D White for a really long time, but I actually prefer this. And the next time I go shopping for toothpaste, I'm going to buy the Optic White again, because not only did I feel like it actually did some whitening stuff to my teeth, but I like the, that the fresh breath actually lasts a really long time. I don't end up with an icky aftertaste like I do with the Arctic Fresh 
of Reed Crest. Then I have a whole lot of fresh stuff in here. I have this Retinol Day Cream Broad Spectrum SPF. This retinol stuff is really, really great, but I prefer the the nighttime one to the daytime one by a lot. I feel like this one just, it was so heavy and clogging to my pores, and I think that that contributed to a bad breakout that I had. Then I used up a, that is not a face product, my Maybelline powder. This is like for just your regular average powder, it was perfectly fine. Nothing to write home about, not a repurchase for me. I also had the face primer of the e.l.f. hydrating primer. I didn't notice anything hydrating. It helped with some lasting power for my CC cream, but I really didn't, not a repurchase for me. It's not anything like the poreless one, which I love. Then I have the Ordinary Buffet uh, Multi-Peptide. This is supposed to be good for texture and anti-aging. I repurchased the bottle. It's $14.80 from Sephora, which is for as good as the product is. I'm like, oh, wow, yes, all day, please. Then I have my Murad Spot Rapid Release Spot Treatment. This hel so helped with some really bad, like I said, it had some cystic breakouts. This worked instantaneously. It was wonderful. The a more Pacific Moisture Brown Rejuvenating Eye Gel. It felt okay, but that's one of those products that you kind of have to okay. Uh, that you have to use kind of long term to get results from it. This is my oil fish oil for helping with joints. I like it. I'm not loyal to any brand, but I did use up the whole thing of it. Going to get another one soon. I have my EOS lip balm and the pomegranate raspberry. Other than the scent, I wasn't too impressed with this to the point that I didn't even finish the very bottom of it. I put it in the empties because it felt like it dried my lips out more and my lips were going through a really bad time and I was trying to put all kinds of stuff on them and you know trying different things through different weeks. This just like I said, the scent was amazing, but it's just not for me. If you have nice lips already and you throw this on, then that might be good for you. I don't understand what the hype is about myself. Then I had the e.l.f. Coconut Exfoliator. Prefer the rose one 1,000%. I thought I would, I was like, oh, I'm not a big fan of the rose scent, but it kind of grew on me. This was irritating to use. It didn't have as much exfoliation as the rose one did, and it didn't last as long. I just wasn't a fan of the coconut style one. I couldn't believe how very different the two scent. You no, know, it wasn't just the scent and the color. There was actually a formula feeling difference between those. My Sally Hansen Miracle Gel Top Coat. I've had it for a couple years. It's been so sticky and hasn't been doing its job even with the Miracle Gel nail polish itself. So I was like, okay, time for that to go. It's almost out anyway, because I did use it pretty consistently. There was just a little bit left that was sticky and not doing it for me. Then I have my Tom's deodorant. It's aluminum free and I love the unscented one and everything else. I really enjoy it. I actually started getting the Equate version because it's a little bit cheaper when they started making the aluminum free and I don't mind. You know, it, I don't sweat too much, so it doesn't bother me very much. And then my last thing, which I actually still have a little bit of, but I'm going to use it tonight when I wash my face, the Murid Blemish Control Clarifying Cleanser. I use this with my Clarisonic Mia. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Going to miss it. Uh, but I got this and the Murad top coat thing as just a set from Outlook. It's such a great brand, but it's so expensive and my budget just can't justify it, unfortunately, if it's not on some kind of a sale like that. And that, all of that is my end of the month thing. And I will see you all for FCA Friday. Go ahead and watch any of the videos that I link to. You can catch me on Twitter at 8FCA8, Twitter thing and we can be friends show me your empties videos and if there's anything that you would want a bigger review on that didn't already have one let me know and i will see you later bye